Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential equation. We have x to the power x squared minus 2x equals 1, and we're going to be solving for x values. Let's see how we can solve this problem in two different ways. We're going to be looking at something interesting at the end, but I included a little surprise for you. See if you can spot it when I show you the thing at the end. Anyways, so we have this expression and what are we going to do? First method, I'd like to use the natural log. Let's go ahead and ln both sides. And we're looking for real solutions. If you have some time left, maybe we can also talk about complex solutions. Now, let's go ahead and bring this to the front. And that's going to give us x squared minus 2x multiplied by ln x. And as you know, ln 1 is 0 in the real world, right? If we're talking about real numbers. Because if we're not talking about real numbers, that's a different story. Maybe we can talk about it later. So we have a equation. It's equal to 0, which is nice. Now we can go ahead and look at each factor. For example, x squared minus 2x equals 0 gives us the following. You can go ahead and factor it. And then from here, we get x equals 0 and x equals 2. All good, right? And let's go ahead and take a look at this. ln x equals 0, as you know, you should know, this is base e, natural log. Uh, if you use the definition of logarithms, it's going to be e to the power 0 equals x. Or you should know this, the log of 1 is 0 at any base. Okay? So it looks like we've got three solutions, right? Are they all good? One thing that we should consider, if you are looking for real solutions, of course, our, the argument of the log function needs to be greater than 0. It can't even be 0, right? It can't be 0. Because ln 0 doesn't exist even in the complex world. Wait a minute. We got x equals 0, so it's not going to count. Well, if you go to the original problem, actually, we don't have a log. This is something we introduced. So, again, that could bring some extraneous solutions or it could cause to a loss of solutions. So, we have to be very careful and check. Another thing about logs is that for example, if you have something like this, is this the same thing as 2 ln x? Yes and no. You have to be very careful because on the right hand side, x cannot be negative. Again, we're talking about real solutions. On the left, x can be negative because when you square it, it's going to turn into a positive. You see, these are not always identical. And sometimes to make sure this works, uh, people will use absolute value sign, which guarantees that x cannot be negative or absolute value of x cannot be negative rather. Make sense? Cool. So pretty much these look like the solutions, but uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this from another perspective. And then we will look at something else. Okay. But again, if you go ahead and check, uh, we don't have a log equation, we have an exponential. But one thing to keep in mind, if you have a negative base in an exponential equation, that's very problematic. Because if you have a negative number and raise it to an another power, for example, what is negative 1 to the power 1 half? In the real world, it doesn't exist. In the complex world, this has two answers. But that's a different world, right? So if you think about the real numbers first, you have to be careful. And we don't want to make the base negative. The base should be non-negative. Okay? Make sense? And obviously, if you have 0 at the base, what happens? That's a good question. All right, we'll talk about it a little later, maybe. Let's go ahead and see how the second solution proceeds. But again, when you find all the solutions, always check with the original equation. For example, if I got x equals negative 1, we wouldn't count it, most probably, because it's a negative number. But depends, again. So we'll talk about it in the second method. Let's go ahead and do it now. So we have an interesting exponential equation, x to the power x squared minus 2x equals 1. Great. So we're going to split this up into cases. Make sense? And we're going to look at each case separately. And of course, this is kind of like a general approach, especially if you expect integer solutions. And looks like with the first method, we found all integers. Right, and we didn't find any non integers, so this should be good. Now we're going to split up into cases, and 
So to generalize, if you have something like a to the power b equals 1, then this can be in examined in three different cases. For example, a can be 1 and b can be any real number. We don't really care. And then the second scenario is b equals 0. And when b is 0, a to the power 0 is 1, right? And then the third case scenario is where a is negative 1, but we have a condition, like I said earlier, if you raise negative 1 to a fractional power, it's just going to be a little crazy, depending on the power, of course. So the graph is going to jump around on the negative x side. And when you try to graph something like this with Desmos, I noticed a couple times that uh, on the left-hand side, which is where the x is negative, it's going to give you a bunch of dots, which shows that the graph will be discontinuous. That's why we don't want x to be less than 0 unless we have some specific integer values. Okay, that's what we're going to get at right now. If a is negative 1, b needs to be even because negative 1 raised to a power 2 or 2n is always going to be positive 1. Make sense? So those are the cases. Let's go ahead and take a look at each case and then we're going to look at the last thing. Can you guess what it is? Okay. Anyways, keep your guesses. Don't give it away. So if a is equal to 1, meaning that my equation, let's go ahead and copy that here. This is my equation, and this would be my a, so x is a. This means x is equal to 1. Now, when once x is equal to 1, we don't really care about the rest, because 1 raised to any power is 1. I know some people just take 1, raise it to the power x, and then just find 2 from here. That's totally false, okay? This is not going to work, but... And then they just title their videos. This is an Olympiad problem, so on and so forth. Anyways, that's a different story. Let's get back to work. If x is 1, we're good. So that's a solution. It's valid. If the second case is b equals 0, what is b? b is the exponent. So I want x squared minus 2x to be 0, just like before. And in this case, I have the factoring. And this means x equals 0 or x equals 2, right? So far, we got three solutions right? And nothing problematic because if you have a negative base, which is not an integer, that could be a problem, but we don't have that. Now, the third case is where a equals negative 1, which means x equals negative 1. But that doesn't come by itself. It's a package. So along with this, we do need to exponent to be even. But when x is negative 1, you get 1 plus 2, which is not even. It's 3. So in other words, if you plug in negative 1, you're going to get negative 1 to the power 3, which is equal to negative 1, and that's not equal to 1. So negative 1 is not a solution. We have to discard it. And we didn't find it with the first method, so that would be consistent. But now let's go ahead and take a look at the thing, which is, ta-da, the graph. And see if you can spot something unusual about this graph. And remember, we found three solutions x equals 0, x equals 1, let me back up a little bit here, use a different color, x equals 1, 0, and 2. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.